Hello, my name is Rock Bartley. I'm uh, 62 years old. I've lived in Kalamazoo most of my life. Um, I started playing the banjo when I was 14. My, my parents, I actually played the guitar and ukulele. There's a picture of me in the Kalamazoo Gazette playing the ukulele in uh, first grade. So I had some musical background. My mom and dad were very uh, supportive of music. We listened to a lot of music in our house. And, uh, but after, I'd say maybe 10, 12 years ago, I um, was encouraged by uh, Craig Spink. He was working at Heritage Guitar. And he said, Rock, you have some of those banjo parts. Why don't you uh, put those together? And fortunate for me, I'm a carpenter and cabinet maker, and I had the tools to do a lot of the uh, cutting that uh, is required for the neck. And uh, for the banjo, really, the neck is the thing that, that I was able to build, not so much the metal parts I didn't make. I would buy those, or I would convert an old Gibson banjo and uh, make a neck for, for, for an old Gibson banjo instead of a four-string neck and a five-string neck. And so I started doing that, like I said, maybe 12 years ago or so. And um, I really enjoyed the process. It's, it's, it, uh, it is a process. You start with picking woods, which I, I really like using interesting woods, curly maple and mahogany, cherry like the banjo here. Um, in doing different inlay patterns and uh, trying to do something that uh, was unique to me. And I'm not interested in making any instrument really that's, that I would make a model of it. Like I'm not making a banjo that would be, oh, this is a style one or something like that. I like each banjo to me has its own story. The woods that I chose for it, the parts might have come from something interesting. And uh, in the last four or five years, I started making acoustic uh, style guitars, kind of like the Martin Dreadnought. It's a Dreadnought guitar. And um, I approach the guitar in the same way, using interesting woods, cherry or uh, Michigan woods that uh, the Osage Orange, I I've, I've like trying different parts. There, there are just so many interesting things to, to experiment with on instruments. And to me, that's, that's the whole fun of it for me, is uh, taking woods that I think are interesting and uh, putting them together and then coming out with a finished instrument that's uh, unique, not only f to me, but for maybe somebody that's interested in buying it. And ultimately, really, the sound is what I'm looking for and, you know, having it sound good and hope, hoping that people enjoy the sounds of things that I make. The banjo is a lot different than most other instruments, as you well know, and a lot of it is mechanical. It's like a... It's kind of like a machine. There's lots of uh, metal parts that have to be machined and um, not as many wood parts as you might think. And I'd like to show you, uh, you know, when those parts are all put together and uh, how they're used to, to make up the banjo pot. Okay, yeah, this is uh, the, the wooden rim uh, to the banjo project that I've been working on. And this is a Gibson style banjo made they kind of developed um, some of these um, features that for a bluegrass banjo player they're the they're like the king of banjos the old gibsons and um, so a lot of copies and people making parts that are like that and that's kind of like what I've done I'm a bluegrass player but I, I've done some stuff to make it a little fancier I've added some purfling which is the black white um, wood purfling there and then the white black white is a plastic uh, uh, binding I call it and also a little cream binding there just to add a little detail which you don't even really see on a banjo when it's put together but I like it because when you take it apart you see that kind of thing and I think that's kind of neat so I sprayed I did a, uh, a waterborne stain first which um, 
is an aniline dye to give it that uh, um, brown color, which is a traditional color for the wood rim. Then um, I, I taped this area off because there's a metal part that goes on there, and I didn't want any finish to be on that. And uh, then I sprayed, well, after I put the stain on, I sprayed um, about uh, four coats of um, clear lacquer on there to uh, um, seal it. And that's in the same kind of finish I use on the, the neck and the resonator. Just get this tape off and then I can bring around some more parts. A lot of, uh, I think finishing is one of the hardest parts to making any instrument. I really enjoy the uh, the gluing and the building of things, and but uh, the finishing is not always so fun because <laughs> it seems to cause the most problems. The next part I was talking about is the tone ring, and uh, this is um, uh, a heavy brass and metal mixture that can be very specific, and uh, the. The 1930s Gibson banjos are really highly sought after for their, this is a flathead tone ring. Some have the V going the opposite direction, so it's actually higher on the middle part, which uh, is called an arch top tone ring. So, but this is a flathead tone ring, which is uh, one of the more desirable ones. And the fit onto the wood rim is crucial too. It's got to fit tightly but not so tight that it doesn't vibrate. Music is all about vibration and the tone ring really gives it that heavy bright sound is what I'd call it. Two different kinds of uh, rim and uh, flange systems for Gibson banjos and this one is actually a two-piece flange. There's a rim right here that this fits against and there's also if you can see it, I don't know if you can see it, there's kind of a flat edge on this side and then this edge is more rounded. And that fits perfectly right up on to the uh, rim like that. And then this flat flange fits on there like that. Now I need to line up, there's a, a spot for the tailpiece and where the neck goes on both parts. So that's, I'm going to look at this to find out where that is. And this is a, a banjo head. It's very much like a drum head. It is a drum head, actually. <laughs> Made probably by Ludwig or Remo. Uh, this um, fits over the tone ring. And it's held in place by what they call a tension hoop, which is this part here. And it has a notch for where the neck will go on that. And then that fits. I need to line that up again. A lot of guys like to have this um, the uh, decal from the uh, head, I call this the head, uh, put on uh, so that it's sort of hidden when you put your tailpiece on, so you don't see it. So I'm going to line this up again, try to get that. Next part are all the hooks and nuts, and I keep those just together so I can organize them. But they what they do is they'll hold the, uh, the tension hoop down and also you can tighten it and tighten it in different amounts to give the head sound uh, a tuning. They call it tap tuning. So I'll show you what, how this all works. This is kind of tricky with one hand, but so you get it through the hole, both holes on the flange and the, the two piece parts there. That goes like that. And then these are um, special little nuts that go on the bottom. And tighten them up. I want to make sure that it's aligned properly again af after I get this sort of sort of set here. So kind of do it in a couple of spots to see. Make sure it's... Banjos are more like a machine than there's so many metal parts. It's 
kind of interesting. A lot different than a guitar where it's all wood. This is, has a lot of metal parts. And it, it, the advantage is there's a lot of adjustments. You can see now that there's, when the neck goes on here, it has two hanger bolts that stick out like this and they actually attach, go through the holes like that and that's what attaches the neck to the pot. I'll put that back up there. <laughs> this has 24 hooks and nuts around it. Or on a banjo they say around 90 pounds is what you want to set these at, which is debatable. It depends on, I think a banjo kind of has a sweet spot and everyone might be slightly different in terms of what um, or where it's, it's, that point is. I'm gonna... It's not a drum yet. <laughs> Tighten these up a little bit, and you can you can hear hear the. Di so you can probably already start to hear the difference. But the, boy, when you put them, put all these hooks, it's a lot of pressure on uh, the uh, top there, and that's uh, kind of what you're looking for. But that's how you see the the details. The next thing for for that, these are called coordinator rods. That fits fits in the pot like that. I don't know if you can see the. Uh, I'll show it like this. So it fits in the larger holes in the back. And then when you put your neck on, the hanger bolts come through. And then you attach the coordinator rod to the neck like that, and that pulls. That pulls the neck tight against this whole system so that that then fits against the roundness of the rim and the tone ring. So on this Gibson style, the old, the old, real old banjos, I'll show you. Here's a ukulele banjo that I refurbished for a friend. But um, the old banjos, older, they used a wooden dowel and um, that's actually glued into the heel of the neck here. And uh, then um, there's an attachment here. And then this part here uh, also keeps that attached to the, uh, so that your neck is attached in that way. But uh, that's, this was, I think, an easier adjustment system and Gibson developed that for, for doing that. I, I, I'm pretty sure Gibson developed that too uh, rod system, but I'm not totally sure. There were there were quite a few banjo makers in the early, you know, 20s and in uh, teens. But uh, yeah, this this is more an old style, and this was more the newer style. So really, to complete the pot, I would uh, put all of my uh, um, hooks and nuts in there, and then um, I would have to add uh, what they call the resonator brackets to the sides, which they hold, they get mounted here. They're just a simple L. A lot of parts. I love the parts. So this L bracket mounts to the side of the banjo. And sometimes they did them in three spots or four is more desirable because it's an even, more even. But uh, that sits there and then um, fits into the side of the resonator. And then this, uh, when you see a banjo, that's what you see are the uh, resonator screws that fit like that in there. And that goes um, into this piece, which is um, in the resonator wall. So that's what holds the wooden resonator to the pot. So I... Uh, played the banjo for probably 20 years without really even understanding how they were uh, assembled 
that well. You know, I took, I replaced my heads, so I knew about taking the nuts and uh, hooks off, but uh, not so much how it was built and what things were so desirable. This is a two, I was telling you early, this has the two-piece flange, which you can see it's got the flange that's flat here, and then the, um, I, I would call like that the flange rim. I'm not exactly sure what that's called, but um, I have, I have a different style right here, which this is the same same kind of rim. It's a three-ply rim, and then this is a one-piece flange, and um, that instead of having the two pieces, it's just a one-piece system. I think it was easy, quicker to assemble for the Gibson employees, and then it fits on there pretty much just like that one fits there. And um, these. For a lot of bluegrass players, they they want because Earl Scruggs played a one-piece flange Gibson. That's kind of what a lot of guys want. But that's um that's just a, an example of uh, a one-piece flange. So they're they're kind of all tightened. Hear that tone? Yeah. So the next the next step for me would be to. Um, make sure my neck connection is right and uh, uh, you know fitting that to the pot is my next step on this then once that's done well we talked about the resonator um, attaching the resonator I would need to on the resonator I'm building right now I'll need to cut where the neck goes yeah also there's a tail piece that attaches tailpiece uh, bracket which um, is on the uh, back side of this uh, this piece here oops upside down that way so I put this in and then that fits there which uh, the tailpiece attaches through that so that puts that uh, piece on the tailpiece bracket, and then the tailpiece fits on through there. And this is what your strings attach to. Oh, I need a longer screw for this one, but that, but that's sort of how that attaches on. My hanger bolt there is a little short, but that's. I think that shows you how that works. And then the neck comes in like this. And your strings, and they all attach down here at the tailpiece. Here's a banjo I built, um, geez, probably almost 10 years ago. I uh, did all the, uh, in, cut all the pearl and all the inlay work. It's not, I've made some Gibson copy necks, but this one I felt was, uh, um, this is a cherry banjo, which is again kind of unusual. Gibson didn't make them out of cherry, but that's what the cherry looks like. But it gives you an idea. This part is called the resonator. And um, it's attached to the banjo. I think I showed you with those. I'll take it off so you can see. And you see the, the tail piece here, and that was the hanger bolt for that down in there. This is a slightly different banjo pot than this one. As you can see, the, the actual attaching and pulling the head down is got a, it's a, called a top tension banjo. And you actually have a, uh, instead of a hook and nut system, the, uh, the, the bolt through the top tension actually attaches to the flange. I'll take the resonator off. So I'm loosening my resonator screws off of the side of the flange. Again, they look like that. And, all right, so I took, I took those uh, resonator screws off and the inside of the resonator looks like this. These are the, the parts I showed you that the uh, resonator screws go into. Then you can kind of see here that whole system that I was describing earlier. These are the uh, 
resonator L brackets and then the two coordinator rods that go into the uh, lag bolts that stick out of the neck and that's the fastening system for the neck to the banjo pot. This, um, you can adjust the neck back and forth this way like if your action is really low here and you need a little bit you can adjust these nuts so that it pushes the heel and then that would bring the neck forward or oops <laughs> or push the neck this way to bring the action down uh, also you know as with most necks nowadays they have you know a truss rod so that that also adjusts um, that's one other thing about the banjo and why um, Gibson banjos are converted from four strings to five strings so often is that it's so easy to take the neck off and put a new neck on it. Whereas with a guitar usually, I'm, they're making bolt-on necks you know, nowadays for guitars quite a bit, but the traditional older Martins and Gibsons all were, you know, had the, the dovetails and uh, they're hard to take apart. But this system with the banjo is, is uh, really easy to take the neck off. So if you break a neck or you want to take a four string neck and you can see, see the difference? The four string neck is shorter because the scale length is different, but also it doesn't have the fifth string peg here. So one cool thing about banjos is that in a conversion you aren't, the neck is attached with two bolts generally. And so like if you wanted to go back to the tenor banjo, you still could. So you haven't wrecked the instrument by taking the neck off. Being able to build something and play it is uh, just really great. And, but it's really great if I make something and somebody says, man, that thing sounds really good. Is that for sale? <laughs> and uh, that would keep my, my hobby going, I think, as I get older, you know, making more instruments that I could keep making instruments as, as long as I sell them. <laughs> so that's, that's ultimately, I think, my goal is to make instruments that I find appealing, but yet I'm able to share them with other people. I think that's my rock Bartley story. <laughs> so.